what's the maximum area of a rectangle with a perimeter of 100? Now, at the end, I'm going to show you a shortcut for this kind of question, but your teacher probably wants to see you do this the long quadratic way. First, let the length of the rectangle be x, and then we'll let the width of the, tri or the rectangle be y. That means we have a rectangle, and it is x wide and y tall. Now that means the other side here is x, and the other side here is y. So if the perimeter is 100, then x plus y plus x plus y, that's one, two, three, four sides all combined, has to be 100. Now, the area of this rectangle is length times width, or x, y. But you can't solve for one of those until you know what one of them is in terms of the other. You're not probably not used to seeing equations that have y in it. So what I want you to do is to go back up to your perimeter equation and solve for y. I'll help you. x plus x is 2x. y plus y is 2y. That on the left still equals 100. Now I'm going to move things over to the right-hand side to try to get y alone. I'm going to move the 2x to the other side. Currently it's positive 2x here, so on the other side of the equation it's going to be minus 2x. See how that moved over there to become minus 2x? And then to get rid of the 2 that's multiplied by y here, I'm going to divide everything by 2. That gives me y equals 50 minus x. Now I've got an isolated version of y that's based only on x. What you can do from that point is substitute this into your area equation. x times y is now x times whatever y equals. y equals 50 minus x, so I'm going to put that there where y goes. Whenever I do a substitution, I like putting brackets around it. That, make, that helps me remember that this whole chunk is what y is. And now I'm actually going to multiply this out so you can see where we're going. 50x minus x squared. And if you want that in like parabola form, it's negative x squared plus 50x. That's just me moving the negative x squared to the front and the positive 50x to the end. So this is the parabola we have to maximize. Now, the next thing I'm going to point out is that whenever you're asked for the maximum or minimum of a parabola, you're being asked to find the vertex. There's a whole bunch of ways you can actually find the vertex. You can do completing the square. Um, there's shortcut formulas like negative b over 2a, if you've ever heard of those. But the way that I'm going to do, he do it here is factoring. I'm going to factor the negative 1 out of the negative x squared here. Negative out of negative x squared is just x squared. And pulling negative out of positive 50x actually gives me 50. Uh, oh, well, I, uh, I'm actually going to factor an extra x out of this as well. I should have taken the greatest common factor out of there before I did anything else. Now I'm going to feel a bit foolish because it looks like it was already factored here. We're basically already kind of there, except I factored it into an extra negative there. The x-intercepts of this, and that's what you get out of factored form after all, is that either x is 0 or x is 50. Those are the x-intercepts. The axis of symmetry, or the place where the vertex is, is the average of those two. Some teachers will have you write x equals x1 plus x2 over 2. Again, you're just taking your two x-intercepts, adding them up and dividing by 2, or averaging them. You get x equals 25. That is the axis of symmetry for this parabola, the area. And so the maximum area itself corresponds to when x is 25. Cool. Now, the question itself is actually asking, what is the maximum area? Well, you can just take any of these expressions you had for area. I have uh, 
x times 50 minus x, but I'm going to plug in 25 everywhere I see x. That's 25 times 50 minus 25. That's 25 times, oh, well, 25 again, and I get 625. Now, I don't know what the units here were, inches or centimeters or whatever, so I'm just going to call this units squared. This question wasn't very clear about that. But the point is, you're probably going to solve your question the exact same way, even if you don't have the same number there. Let x and y be your length and width. Get an expression for y in terms of x by using the perimeter you were given. Use that isolated value for probably y in your area expression, length times width. Get the vertex any way you know how, factoring, vertex form, completing the square, um, negative b over 2a, whatever, to get a value of x that represents where the vertex is, then you can plug that into the area formula to get the actual area. Now, if you're wondering what the shortcut is, the area of a rectangle is always going to be maximized for a square. So really, all you have to do is take your perimeter, divide it by 4, and you'll get the length and width of the square that maximizes the area. Now, that's not true if one of these sides is a fence or something, and so you only have to box in three sides of it. That only works when you're given the total perimeter for a rectangle and you're fencing all four sides in. Cool. Anyways, thanks for being with me, and best of luck.